we know that a group of alveoli together with alveolar duct and respiratory bronchiole is known as a primary pulmonary lobule or acinus. We also know that several primary pulmonary lobules are grouped together by thin layers of connective tissue to be known as secondary pulmonary lobules. The layers of connective tissue that separate secondary pulmonary lobules are known as septae. Also each secondary pulmonary lobule has a bronchovascular bundle which is composed of terminal bronchi and a branch of pulmonary artery which is known as lobular artery. Bronchovascular bundle also has a connective tissue around itself. A lobular artery gives off several branches tiny enough to be called as arterioles and they run alongside the respiratory bronchioles. Arterioles eventually end up in a network of capillaries that surround the alveoli of that primary lobule. The blood from these capillaries are after absorbing oxygen is collected by venules. These venules join together to form bigger veins that run between septae and finally the oxygenated blood is taken to left atrium of heart from where it is supplied to whole body. Now that we have seen this sketch and we have seen this sketch before I thought uh, it would be nice for us to identify some of these uh, secondary pulmonary lobules and septae of connective tissue using imaging techniques. The best imaging modality is a CT scan which creates cross-sectional images. The thin septae are so small that if normal they are very difficult to see even on HRCT and for that reason we have an image in which these septae are thickened because of uh, a condition. So thing to remember whenever you see a prominent interlobular septae it means a patient is suffering from a condition which is involving interstitium rather than alveoli. However often a number of such conditions eventually involve alveoli as in this case uh, either as a direct or indirect effect. So you can see some thickened lines that are creating polyhedral in shape. The thing uh, that is surrounded uh, by this pattern is a secondary pulmonary lobule. So you can see a number of secondary pul pulmonary lobules uh, in this area and the image is a very good example of both septal thickening which means uh, interstitial abnormality and a ground glass opacity that is distributed randomly throughout both lungs. So uh, ground glass opacity uh, means alveolar process which has involved whole or some of the the secondary pulmonary lobules. Some lobules are affected while others are not. The finding, the combination of finding is known as crazy uh, paving pattern. So the sign, the, the pattern is like a pavement here. And number one culprit for such appearance is alveolar proteinosis, which results from accumulation of uh, phospholipoproteins, which uh, phospholipoproteins within interstitium and alveoli. Second on list is uh, Nemocystis carinii pneumonia, which is a fungal infection and immunocompromised uh, patients such as AIDS patients and patients on chemotherapy are more likely to have it. Healthy body can easily take care of this pathogen. The differential diagnosis also include adult respiratory distress syndrome which means non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And sarcoidosis and pulmonary hemorrhage are also on the list. Some other conditions can also produce this pattern. 
uh, and we have previously discussed uh, some of those conditions before and the videos are available on the web for website for those who might be interested other important thing that uh, I would like to point out for those uh, who might be interested in image interpretation you see these two lines uh, one in each line these are uh, oblique fissures they're separating upper and lower lobes so they start uh, posteriorly uh, at the level of fourth thoracic vertebra this is not fourth this is definitely um, not fourth uh, the horizontal fissure start posteriorly uh, at around the level of fourth thoracic vertebra they fan out and move anteriorly and inferior to separate uh, upper and lower lobe on both sides in uh, this exercise horizontal fissure which is present only on right side only on in right lung runs parallel with the beam of radiation and cannot be seen as these lines uh, but often you will see a vascular area in right lung which represents horizontal fissure separating right upper and right middle lobe there's no middle lobe on left side so there's no horizontal fissure on the left side.